Located in the heart of Dublin's north inner city, One Place has provided acute paediatric care for almost 140 years. A home from home which offers safety at times of uncertainty. This building tells a story of hope, determination and strength. And tonight we go behind its doors to share the stories from the theatres and wards, to meet the staff who dedicate their lives to the care of Ireland's children, and to follow the journey of families and their little patients who are in need of vital and life-saving treatment. Welcome to Temple Street Children's Hospital. A new morning at Temple Street Children's Hospital. Upstairs in the high dependency unit, mom and dad wait with their newborn baby Neil ahead of surgery. We knew he had a teratoma, a big tumor, by the scans they were following every three weeks and see how he was going. They checked everything, it was okay, apart from that. They're going to do their best to remove it and plastic surgeons and see how, what they can do. Initial scans showed a large tumour growing on their son's lower back. And today, baby Neil will return to the theatre for the first time since his birth. Baby Neil was born with a condition called sacrococcygeal teratoma, which is a benign tumour that arises from the lowest part of the spine, the, or the coccyx, the tailbone. This tumour was picked up antenatally, so before baby Neil was born, we knew about it, and it's a very large tumour, as you, you may see. Our aim is to remove this tumour entirely, and also to remove the lowest part of the tailbone to try and prevent it recurring, because there is a chance that this tumour can become malignant in later life. Obviously there's very important structures down there, such as major blood vessels, nerves, and also the rectum or the back passage is right beside the tumour. So we have to be very careful in, in removing it. Yeah. He's a strong boy. He was a very healthy baby, came over and breathing and circulation, everything was very good on arrival. He was seen by the neonatologist here and the surgical team, so they carried out a few exams and tests on him. He had to get an MRI scan done just to confirm what was involved in the tumour, whether the spinal cord was involved and he had blood tests done just to prepare him for surgery. Initially it was only dad that was here because mum was post-section. Dad was great, you know, he was kind of giving her the update constantly with all the scans and everything that was happening. It is very daunting, but you know, he is the support of all the staff there. They knew exactly what was happening. So when mum came over on day three, she started to breastfeed Neil, baby Neil and done quite well. It was great that she could be involved. We didn't expect it that big. What can we do? <laughs> In the top flat surgical ward, Craig is also waiting with his parents ahead of surgery. Found out from a recent eye test that Craig had a cataract. We went back to the hospital to get some tests done and resulted in today to get an operation to remove the cataract. He actually slipped through the net where usually recent eye tests beforehand in primary school, they don't really test till he goes into the mainstream school. I think it's because his age, he's so young that the eyes are quite strong. The right eye has been doing all the work for him. When he went and got an eye test, he blocked out the right eye and then we knew then there was a big difference. The left eye couldn't do half the work. 
Cataracts in children are they're rare enough. I would do about 50 surgeries a year in children. About 15 of those would be in babies and the rest would be in older children. The cataract is the lens of his own eye that's opacified and it's stopping the light from getting in there. His vision in his left eye is significantly reduced and his right eye is a normal eye with normal vision. Because he's coming late, one has to wonder whether he's doing any surgery and it will make a difference to him or not. And that's a judgment call. Because um, unlike adults, cataracts in children behave quite differently. There is what we call a critical period of visual development in children. And for example, in a baby, if a baby gets a cataract, you've got to do it within the first three months, the first eight weeks to get any visual outcome. So in this little man, the question is, how long has it been there? And if it's been there since he was a baby, all the best surgery in the world won't make any difference to the vision. If it's occurred after that, then by taking it away, we may get significant improvement in his vision. And so, uh, having discussed all that with his mum and his dad, uh, we decided we should go for surgery. I was in the yard, I was looking at everybody with my left eye, and I just saw blurry, I could see people. My dad said he's going to get a sledgehammer <laughs> and take it out with my eye. Meanwhile, over in the day ward, Brooke has arrived for a checkup. Well, when somebody said to me, Brooke's had to be bitten by a dog, I just went, what dog? I, I never entered it into my head. It was our dog. She was out. She was in plane and she went down, showed, showed two people, two girls, her dog. And the dog was jumping up, so she went to push the dog down. And she hit him as she was putting him down. And he basically turned. I think she stood on her foot as well as, and he turned and he snapped and he got, he got her arm. He's never, never turned on anyone. He's never growled. And he's real playful and what have you, so I was, I was shocked. We have a mobile home, so we, are, we, are, we stay in the mobile home for the summer and I was just at my sister-in-law's mobile home and I just heard crying and one of the, the ladies on the, the mobile home park ran out to me and said, Brooke has had to be bitten by a dog. And I noticed that the, the cut was actually bad here, so brought her in here and they took one look at her and said, come back in the morning to the plastic surgery team. So we did and it turned out that she was actually getting a bad infection into the arm, so that's why they had to bring her down to surgery. You have to be a big brave girl. Yeah. <laughs> She had two lacerations on her hand, on her palm, and then she had a deeper one up on her forearm. We weren't overly concerned um, that she'd done anything too serious, but with any injury like this, um, particularly with a dog, there's a risk of infection. And they had to cut bits of skin away and everything, the bacteria out, so. And then she was in here for three days, up in the ward. So today, Brooke is back at the hospital after surgery to have her stitches removed and see how the wound is healing. Especially during the summer months when the kids are out playing and playing with the dogs, you know, we would get it quite frequently. Two weeks ago we had a two into the day ward um, for a washout in Citroen as well, an exploration of the wound, so it would be quite frequent. I still can't fathom it was Sam that, that bit. He never growled at anyone. He's a real family pet, he's a much loved family pet. And he's actually her dog, she has him since he's about six, eight, six weeks old. Is that okay? Oh, sure. You can okay. rest it down. Over in the high dependency unit, baby Neil is ready to be transferred to theatre. We have to wait and see once they open, then have a better idea. They, they did all scans and tests and everything. They know what they're dealing with, but um, they said until they open, they don't really know what. They know where it is, it doesn't affect the spine and everything, so that's good. No one likes having surgery on any child, but in this case, they obviously know there's a major abnormality there and they can't take their baby home until we remove the tumor. Any questions or? We obviously run through the potential complications as there can be with any surgery such as bleeding, infection and injury to other structures but we reassure them that we try and make the surgery as safe as possible um, and take all the necessary precautions. 
Positioning was difficult. You have to be very careful and handle the tumour with extreme caution. It is very delicate. The skin covering it was very delicate, so we had to ensure that there was no pressure areas. So he was nursed on a pressure relieving mattress and turned every two to four hourly, depending on how if the skin got red or anything like that. The big thing, because of the sheer size of the tumour, it had a lot of blood supply to it. One of the biggest problems initially could be cardiac failure due to the, the high volume of blood. This was something that you know you needed to observe. We will be making a, a chevron shaped incision uh, in the buttock area. We will be removing the coccyx which is the lowest part of the, the spine or the tailbone and we will try and remove the tumour intact so in one large piece and then we have to reconstruct the muscles and the area to try and bring it back into a normal position because the tumour is so large arising from the pelvis that it pushes everything out of its way. Outside theatre, Craig waits with his mom ahead of surgery. Bringing him in and looking at his little eyes closing with the gas and that. I think it's the worst thing in the world as a parent you have to do. She explained everything and asked him, did he want to do it, and he did, which was, gave him a little bit of confidence. Yeah, cataract is, is their own natural lens. It becomes opacified for a number of reasons, and there are various reasons. Sometimes we don't find any cause at all. It's usually micro-incision surgery using a microscope. And what happens is that we literally break the cataract up in the eye and take it out, either with a, what we call ultrasound or indeed we just, it, we just suction it out of the eye because it's usually very soft in a child. We put an implant in the eye and an implant is, is a basically an alternative, it's an artificial alternative to the person's own natural lens which is diseased and which is no good to them. He has only 6% in the left eye, you know, he's practically no vision in the left eye and up to the test being done at school and being referred to here, we know it was absolutely nothing, you know, but they said it's a possibility, it's been there from birth and he's just coped with it all along. It's only come along in the developmental stages, there's a good chance the operation will be successful, but if it had been there from birth. As he said to me, yes, it's like opening a Christmas present, you don't know what you've got, so we'll see. Meanwhile, also in theatre, Mr. Mortel begins surgery on baby Neil. The predominant mass of the tumour is outside the body, but there is a small component that pushes inside the baby's pelvis, and this is the most difficult area to, to reach for us. Yeah, once we get that vessel, and um, so really if it was a much smaller lesion, then sometimes parents might say we don't want to take the chances. But our knowledge of this tumor and the fact that it will potentially become malignant in the future is enough of a concern to say that all kids should have this removed. It would be dangerous to leave it behind. There are potential risks of major bleeding because there are big vessels that arise from the pelvis that are feeding this tumour. Mm. There are important nerves and muscles in that area that can control your bowel and also mm. um, your, your bladder controls. And then there's a risk of leaving some of the tumour behind which may lead to it recurring in the future. It is benign so we're not too worried about it now but we do not want to increase the risk of recurrence. Back in the day ward, Brooke's stitches are ready to come out. How's that look? She looks very well. No, no. Do you fix No, you just need a flat. That was the gnome spirit.
If you feel anything at all, you just let me know. The two wounds in her hand were closed with dissolvable stitches that don't need to come out, they'll just disappear by themselves. And then the deeper cut up in her forearm, we had to put in a different type of suture material in there, and that's what we were taking out today. And in one of the wounds, we could see the tendon, but it hadn't, it hadn't been cut through. As you can see today, she's moving all her fingers absolutely fine. So luckily in her case, there was nothing more serious. How many stitches did she have? Oh, I think you had about 100. Very dramatic altogether for you. Okay. <laughs> about 15 stitches. Yeah. Initially in A&E we would have been asking her to move her hand and she was moving it fine so we weren't overly concerned as I said about that at the time. We definitely see two or three children a week who've been bitten by a dog um, downstairs and yet yeah, I suppose the problem with it is that if it's not treated the infection can spread rapidly. If she can keep it dry for the next 24 to 48 hours, that'd be great. But after that, there isn't any real precautions that need to be taken. Obviously, if mum notices that it's getting red or if there's any discharge from it, it's important to go to the GP and get him or her to have a look at it. The paper stitches will fall off by themselves. All right, well, it's about to fall asleep. Huh? You said keep it dry and stuff for 48 hours and then because we're down in the mobile, there's sand and dirt and what have you, so I'm going to keep it covered myself until it looks a bit hardier than it actually is now. She's not getting that medicine. <laughs> you know, the relaxing medicine they give you to get that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like chicken. <laughs> and there, just there on her hand. The sedation normally, after a half an hour to 45 minutes, they should be well enough to go home. Brooke was very drowsy on going home, but she, she was, when she was walking out with the mom, she was fine. We would always advise the parents just to keep an eye on the child for up to 24 hours. They can be drowsy, disorientated, and that is normal after any sedation, so they need to be monitored quite closely at home afterwards. She go back and go, a lot of loving off her nannies and her aunties, they're all waiting on her to come out now and be finished, be over and done. Once the infection, they said the infection was gone, I was happy enough with that then, I've no worries then. So she's young enough for the scar to heal up to be nothing when she gets older, so. A few days later, Craig has been admitted to recover after theatre. Everything has gone good. I have to say, Craig has recovered brilliant. He bounced back very quick. So all we're looking forward to is to go down to the doctor and have a quick check on the eye just to see how everything is before he, he lets us go home. So surgically anyway, it's very successful and we've seen him for the follow-up visits afterwards and uh, he's looking good, he's already gained vision I'd say and he will need glasses as a temporary measure. All been alright? And now what will happen next is the harder part, I'm going to get his mother to patch his good eye so that his brain will start to use the eye that had the cataract in it to try and force his brain to use the eye. Yesterday my coach, a soccer, my soccer coach called me and said, are you coming up to train? And I said, yeah. Let's get his presents, that's what he's thinking about, you know? Go home and open them all. <laughs> you to put your head back and look up to the ceiling. Here's a little tissue for you. Good. You want to open the eyes. Good boy. Every reason to believe that he's going to gain out of it. How much he'll gain, I don't know yet, but he's certainly, he's certainly been worth doing it. Meanwhile, upstairs in high dependency, Baby Neil is recovering after an intensive operation. The surgery was, was difficult and took a couple of hours, but we were able to get the entire tumour out or the teratoma out. We were very happy with the surgery. 
it, it went as well as could be expected and he's made a good recovery in the last days so we're happy with his progress. Okay Papa. Oops. Oh, big cough there. It was very challenging because the tumour itself was large as you saw and it had a number of cystic components which are fluid filled sacs and it had some solid components and our, our difficulty was trying to get all of those pieces out not leave any behind and also remove a little bit of the tailbone. There were some big blood vessels in there and we did have a little bit of bleeding during the surgery but it was controllable. How things will be in the future for baby Neil we have to wait and see and really you can't tell until three to four years of age so it's something that we have to keep a close eye on for the future. He went to intensive care first of all and it wasn't so much that he was critically ill, it was really to keep an eye on him closely for the, the 24 to 48 hours after surgery. He needed transfusion during the procedure so it's important to make sure that his blood count was stable and to make sure his pain was well controlled because it was a, a big incision and it was quite invasive surgery in a sense. At the minute the wound, the wound care is of most importance. You just don't want that wound to break down, so we're just keeping a very close eye on it. Um, initially, he would have been in the incubator just for wound observation and also to control his temperature and just to keep a general close eye on him. The wound was reviewed then. Once they saw that the wound was healing well, then we moved him into a cot, which were, the parents were absolutely delighted over. Here's your lovely cot. Nice, Ricky. Nice. Nice. All good. Yeah. You want to go home? <laughs>